Intro to Logic Part 5, Logical versus True. This video is about two main ways to evaluate an argument. The first is called truth value analysis. This determines if the information in premises and conclusion is true, i.e. whether it accurately represents the world. So truth value analysis asks the question, are premises and conclusion true? And truth value analysis applies not to the whole argument, but rather to particular statements. So it's incorrect to say an argument is true or an argument is false. It's correct to say an individual statement in an argument is true or is false. Let's look at an example. This lecture has 80 slides. Each slide takes at least 10 minutes to discuss. Therefore, this lecture lasts at least 800 minutes. So truth value analysis asks whether each individual statement in this argument is true or false. What about the first statement? This lecture has 80 slides. Thankfully, that's false. It has fewer. Now let's go to the second premise. Each slide takes at least 10 minutes to discuss. Also false, thankfully. So the conclusion, therefore, this lecture lasts at least 800 minutes. The conclusion is also false. So what we've done here is looked at whether each individual statement is true or false. We have not determined whether the argument is valid or strong, i.e. whether it makes sense logically. Logical analysis looks at the logical connection between premises and conclusion. It asks the question, if the premises were true, would they prove the conclusion? The definition of the term valid in logic is that if the premises of the valid argument are true, then the conclusion must be true. We'll talk more about validity in the next couple of videos. There's also the concept of logical strength, which is that if the premises are true, then the conclusion is probably true based on those premises. So these are two types of logical analysis looking for whether the argument is valid or looking for whether it is strong. Logical analysis, unlike truth value analysis, up does apply to the whole argument. It does not apply to particular statements. So it's incorrect to say this statement is valid or this statement is invalid. It is correct to say this argument is valid or this argument is invalid. So let's go back to our sample argument. This lecture has 80 slides. Each slide takes at least 10 minutes to discuss. Therefore, this lecture lasts at least 800 minutes. When we're doing logical analysis, we don't care whether the premises and conclusion are actually true. This is a crucial point. If you look at the definition of validity, a valid argument does not have to have true premises or true conclusion. So what makes it valid and why do we care about being valid if it can still have false premises and conclusion? Being valid means that hypothetically, if the premises were true, would they prove the conclusion? This means that we're testing for the logical connection between premises and conclusion. The logical connection can be good even if the premises happen to be false in a particular case. We know that the premises and conclusion of this argument are all false, but if the premises were true, would the conclusion have to be true? The answer is yes, so it is a valid argument. If you did have a lecture that had 80 slides, and if it were true that each slide took at least 10 minutes to discuss, it would also be true that the lecture would last 800 minutes. So it's useful to know that this argument form, this general idea of an argument is valid even if the conclusion happens to be false in this particular case. Let's look at some examples. If a polygon is a triangle, then it has angles summing to 180 degrees. This polygon is a triangle. Therefore, this polygon has angles summing to 180 degrees. We begin with the truth value analysis of each premise. Let's look at premise one. If a polygon is a triangle, then it has angles summing to 180. Is that correct? The answer is yes, it's true. Now let's go to the second premise. This polygon is a triangle and is referring to, of course, the polygon on the right in the slide. 
This is also true. Therefore, this polygon has angles summing to 180 degrees. Also true. So we've done our truth value analysis, but now we need to do logical analysis. Even though the conclusion is true and the premises are true, it does not prove the argument is valid. We need to ask if the premises are true in general, does that in general prove the conclusion? The answer is yes, it is a valid argument form. So this is an example of an argument that is valid and has all true premises. We also can use the word sound in logic to refer to being both valid and having true premises. A sound argument also necessarily has a true conclusion. Let's look at some more examples. We're gonna go through various combinations of true and false premises and valid and invalid arguments. If a polygon is a triangle, then it has angles summing to 180 degrees. Is that true? The answer is yes, it is true. This polygon is a triangle. Well, if you look at the polygon on the right, it's not a triangle, so that's false. Therefore, this polygon has angles summing to 180 degrees. That's also false because a square has angles summing to 360 degrees. So we've done our truth value analysis on each premise and conclusion, but logical analysis is a separate step. So we ask, is this argument valid or invalid? The argument is still valid even though it has a false premise. So this is an example of a valid argument with a false premise and a false conclusion. So remember, valid does not guarantee that the premises and conclusion are true. It's a hypothetical guarantee. It's like a promise. If you give me true premises, then I will give you a true conclusion. But if you have a false premise, like in this case, a valid argument can still have a false conclusion. So it's valid even though it has a false premise. Another example. All Americans are either Democrats or Republicans. Is that true or is it false? It's actually false. Most Americans who are politically active are gonna be one of those two parties, but there's other parties too, such as Libertarians and Greens. There's also people who are independent and so on. Let's look at the next premise. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is not a Republican. That's true. So now let's look at the conclusion. Therefore, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is a Democrat. This is also true. So we've done our truth value analysis, but now we need to look at whether the argument is valid or invalid. If those premises were true, would they prove the conclusion? The answer is yes, it's a valid argument. So this is a case where we have a valid argument, but with one false premise and still has a true conclusion. You could say that the valid argument is not what guarantees the truth of the conclusion because it has a false premise. So sometimes you can have a valid argument with a false premise and the conclusion could be true just through luck or chance, you might think of it as. But what this shows you is that the argument per se is not what's proving the conclusion because it has a false premise. If you know the conclusion is true, it has to be for some other reason than this argument. Let's look at another example. All humans are animals. All humans are carnivores. Therefore, all animals are carnivores. Is the first premise true? All humans are animals. The answer is yes, it is true. What about the second premise? All humans are carnivores. That's false. So some humans, such as Michaela Peterson, uh, are carnivores. She is supposedly only eats an all beef diet. Um, but not all humans are carnivores. Most are omnivores or vegetarians. So let's look at the conclusion. Therefore, all animals are carnivores. That's also false. Many animals eat only plants, herbivores. So now let's look at the validity of this argument. If the premises were true, would they prove the conclusion? The argument form is actually invalid. Any argument that shares this general form um, is going to also be invalid. In this course, we mainly cover propositional logic. This argument that has the form all X are Y, all Z are Y, therefore all X are Z is actually from predicate logic, but it's pretty easy to explain why it's invalid. Um, just because all humans are animals, it doesn't mean that all animals are humans. 
And so even if all humans are also carnivores, it would not therefore prove that all animals are also carnivores. So this is an example of an invalid argument with a false premise and a false conclusion. Another example, all humans are mortal. Is that true or is that false? That's true, so far as we know, everyone will eventually die. Second premise, all humans are dogs. False. Conclusion, therefore all dogs are mortal. That's also true. So is this argument valid or invalid? The answer is invalid. So even if all humans are mortal and all humans are dogs, it would not prove that all dogs are mortal. And it has to do with this similar error in reasoning about groups or sets of things. Just because all humans are dogs, for example, it doesn't mean that all dogs are humans. So this is an example of an invalid argument with a false premise and a true conclusion. Another example, all humans are mortal. Is that true or false? It's true. No dogs are human. Is that true or false? Also true. Therefore, no dogs are mortal. Is that true or false? False. So we have an argument with true premises and a false conclusion. But let's look to see whether it's valid or invalid. If the premises were true, would they prove the conclusion? The answer is no. It's an invalid argument form. So just because all humans are mortal and no dogs are human, it does not prove that no dogs are mortal. This is an example of an invalid argument with true premises and a false conclusion. And this illustrates the concept of being invalid very clearly. If an argument has true premises and a false conclusion, that's how you know it's not valid. If you have an argument you think is valid, an argument form you think is valid, but you discover one example of that form that has true premises and false conclusion, you can prove that all other arguments that share the form are invalid. So what valid means is not that the premises or conclusion have to be true per se. What valid means is you will never get a case like this with true premises and false conclusion. Like I said, valid is like a promise. If the premises are true, it guarantees the conclusion will be true. So if you ever have a case where premises are true but conclusion is false, it breaks that promise so it's an invalid argument. Another example, final example, all humans are mortal. Socrates is mortal, therefore Socrates is human. Let's look at the first premise. All humans are mortal. That's true. Socrates is mortal. Also true. Therefore Socrates is human. Also true. So we have true premises and true conclusion. Does that mean the argument is valid or invalid? It's an invalid argument. We cannot tell whether it's invalid just by looking at the truth values of the premises. The only exception is where we have true premises and false conclusion, that's the clear indicator that it is not valid. However, in order to determine whether it's valid or invalid in other cases, you have to look at the logical connections between premises and conclusion by thinking about their meaning. Just because all humans are mortal and Socrates is mortal, it does not prove that Socrates is human. For example, what if Socrates were a dog or some other type of mortal thing? So you could have true premises and true conclusion just by dumb luck. This argument does not prove the conclusion is true, even though by chance the conclusion does happen to be true. So this is an example of an invalid argument form with true premises and true conclusion. Remember, what makes the argument invalid is just that even though the conclusion happens to be true, this argument does not give you reason to believe it. It does not prove the conclusion. The conclusion is true for other reasons. Next up, part six, deduction versus induction. This looks at the two main types of logical arguments.